Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Dave Abdallah? Here. Thomas Berry? Here. Robert Constant? Here. Lisa Hicks Clayton? Here. Margaret Horvath is absent. Joseph Kosinski? Here. Ray Muscat? Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. We'll be led tonight in the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Wassam Dave Abdullah, who just got back from a beautiful trip to his home country of Lebanon. Okay. <laughs> Next time, take me. Go ahead. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman. Councilwoman Lisa Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the order of business July 25th, 2017, regular meeting of the Dearborn Heights City Council as presented. Support. Support, Support by Councilman Barry. Uh, hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the July 11th, 2017 meeting. Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. Motion to approve the minutes from July, 7, July 11th, 11. 2017 as outlined in 4A. Support. Support, Support by Councilwoman Lisa Hicks Clayton. Mm -hmm. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next item, item five, public hearing and comments on any agenda items. Anybody have any comments on any pending agenda items? Go up and state your name and if you live in Dearborn Heights or what city you live in. Um, yeah, I'm Dan Stockram. I'm with Realty Transition and we own uh, 5689 Robinson uh, plus eight other properties. And uh, we recently in the last year and a half sold another 20 or so. Um, I'm just really here just to introduce ourselves. I know that I've contacted uh, several members of the council and the mayor, and I just wanted everyone to yeah, understand. Yeah, so this that would be at the end. It wouldn't be now. Do you have an agenda item? You yeah, the you agenda item is the... commenting the, uh, on a, a particular agenda item. Yes, the, the 8A, the purchase of property. Right, yeah, uh, that's one particular house on Universal that's near the... Is that's near the Course Creek, yep. Mayor? Right. So this well, well, actually, that's what I—that's uh, what I'm coming to clarify is the, the actual agenda item itself also attached, the entire list of tax foreclosures, and it had T's, on each of the, uh, on several of the properties, so I was just inquiring, what was that because the letter itself only referenced one pro or just that one property. Right, so it's not. For tip off. Those were ones that were reviewed by Carmen because they were in the tip district. He's not purchasing any. It's just that one parcel that's on your agenda. And right. we're very aware of your company. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's I, I, I say I was Our uh, economic development director, he, he uh, has talked with you, and we spoke a little before the meeting, but that's that one beyond the because agenda. Because that's not on agenda. Okay. Hey, thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else, please come up and state your name and the street you live on. Yeah, actually, I wasn't Bob Haddis, uh, 500 North Beach Daily, and I just noticed that uh, particular... Uh, deal about speaking about items on the uh, on the agenda with respect to these properties that you're purchasing from Wayne County I think that's like in September when the auction goes do we get a list is there a certain number of homes because I couldn't tell from the agenda whether it involved one property or it involved now I know now I <coughs> I heard you say it involved only one property however reading this I wouldn't know that are there other properties uh, that we're looking at and generally what do you do with these properties once the city purchases them we get the right of first refusal for certain properties you do the and county then, and it's going to end up with and state then we're, county we're bombarded by different companies one you just saw get up saying we want you to sell those to us and we'll put families in them or and that's well, i guess not that the, that's my question is this thing put up for uh, like a public uh, deal? Does the public get involved in this at all? Or does the public uh, have the opportunity? Other contractors, do they have the opportunity? Yeah. Let me do Please. That. Okay. Basically what ends up happening is we have a first right of refusal after the state exercises its first right of refusal with respect to uh, properties that have been tax foreclosed and that have not been redeemed. So the state gets its first chance, then we get our chance to buy it at the minimum bid price. And then if it's not purchased, then it ends up going up to the August um, auction. 
and that's that's and, and that's and that's my that's my whole question. Let's say the state doesn't exercise it, and then uh, the city decides to purchase it. Uh, once we purchase it, does what happens? Is it, does it come back before the council to decide whether this is going to go out for a public bid or whether the city is going to decide? Even in that instance, if the city decides to tear it down, does that come before the council to see what the best use for this particular property is and the funds that this city is going to expend doing all of this? Because, and, I, and again, I won't, I won't belabor the NSP program. I had some issues with that, but I do want to ask about this. If it's one property, it are there more than one properties, prospectively, in Dearborn it's Heights? near the e Rook, but can uh, I, Mr. Chair? Chair? But is there more than one property yeah, right now? Because more, I'm there, certain on the on the foreclosure list, there's probably yeah, there more is, than one property. So on item 8A in our packet, which I believe, obviously is a public, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's on. I believe that's on the website. But there are other properties really that are in foreclosure. It's probably about, I don't know, a good okay. maybe 70, 80 of them here. It, it okay. Is, it I is. haven't, the only reason why I, I tried looking at that list today on the Wayne County site, and of course I couldn't log in because it doesn't open up till I think like the 18th of August, and then it goes into uh, September when the auction actually takes place in September. And then if the state and nobody else bids on it, it'll go to the October sale, at which point there'd be no liens on a property. Up to that point, until the second auction, there are liens on the property and so forth. And anybody purchasing it, of course, would, and that's why I want to know, have we done this in the past? Uh, we've purchased properties from the state, obviously. We, we, are, we are not in the real estate business. But if there is a lot along the creek, we do purchase it because we hope to get the grant for the Ecorse Creek project, and this is the perfect time to purchase those lots. The only other time that we will generally pick up these homes is if they're in such bad condition and neighbors have been complaining and then we would demolish them. All right. But there, there was only, the departments went through the list, there was only one creek lot and that's the only one we're purchasing. Actually, oh, real, McIntyre? Yeah, just real quick, this particular one, we, we, uh, we want to tear it down. It's, it, it's not right at the creek, but it's, it's We've been trying to get the owner to uh, tear it down for a while. So right. when they come up for, when they come available to us, then we'd like to buy those and tear them down. I appreciate that. And uh, the only thing, reason that I came up here and asked that, I just wanted to clear any thoughts I had in terms of what we do with these properties if we acquire them. Obviously, there may be properties that are worth keeping and uh, stabilizing a neighborhood. In this instance, like you've answered that. I just wanted some clarification. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right, the next item on the agenda, item six, fund transfers and current claims. Mr. Chair. Councilman Barry. Will City Council approve current claims 6-1 through 6-33? Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Councilman um, uh, Musket and then Councilman. I, I have two that I'd like to ask a couple questions for. First one is 6-9, broad spire claim. Um, I just like to know what this is. Uh, it doesn't. Either I'm missing it uh, of what it is. So I'd like to know what it is. Genex Service Incorporated. The Broad Spire claims are workman's comp claims. Um, okay. Uh, no, we can stop right there then. Okay. And then um, my second. Uh, is we go back to the um, uh, item uh, 624, the Nagel construction. This is kind of an old thing for me. I'm still seeing multiple times we're cleaning the same sewers again. It's an ongoing thing. We passed an ordinance. We supposedly hired a grease trap inspector. Why are we still? Uh, I shouldn't say why are we still doing it. We're doing it because they are dirty. My question is, have we figured out what's going on yet by having a grease trap inspector? This is still ongoing. I mean, in the last 40 days, we've spent $71,991. And there's got to be eight, nine, ten that get cleaned <coughs> all the time in, I, in 30 days counting. And, and it got to be able to stop this somehow. I, I don't know what the answer is. And I'm, I'm not putting, I'm not putting it on a DPW or anyone else. But collectively, we got to be able to figure out where these grease is coming from. 
Yeah, we're starting, Bill and I, we're starting to put some of those uh, areas together. Uh, we have an ordinance now that will allow us to uh, issue tickets to these folks. So we've been putting the, uh, the expectation is that the businesses hire a company that's going to relieve the uh, grease interceptors. They have to show us proof that they're doing that. And if they don't, then that's something that we can go after them on. Because I, I know we passed that ordinance quite a while ago and we hired a grease trap uh, yep. inspector a while ago and, and, and I'm hoping that I quit seeing this. Yep, that's the goal. Cost. That's the goal for sure. All right, thank you. I have a question while Jack is up there. Oh, Dave, I was the oh I'm oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 okay. no, 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 it, it, it doesn't pertain to, doesn't pertain to this, but go ahead. Okay, so I had, a, this one's for um, the library department, McCaffrey. Um, this is item number 622 library fund and it's for modernistic cleaning and restoration. And there was an amount payable for $4,227.90. And I want to get a little bit more of a clarification because this particular thing is for commercial air duct cleaning. And although I'm not an expert on that, it seemed to be pretty excessive to be, the total bill was 4227 but for just the commercial air duct cleaning was around 4200 well, the, the full amount, $4,200. It seemed yeah, they pretty were, excessive just looking at it. They were cleaning uh, air ducts, ceiling, ceiling tiles, uh, along the metal along the top. Um, and it's about 11 or 12 years worth of stuff up there. So it's not just air duct cleaning. They were cleaning the entire ceiling in that building. Um, and uh, it greatly improved the quality of the air for staff. And, and this is at both libraries, correct? This is what I see. JFK. JFK. I okay. got a quote for CK, and I'm probably just doing a much smaller amount there uh, because um, because of the cost. So I'm just probably just going to hit the ceiling tiles on those. But. Okay. So the question I had for one library, we paid about forty-two hundred dollars, forty-two twenty-seven. Um, was there? Did you get estimates on that? Multiple estimates on that? I mean, I, again, I, just looking at it from the outside, looking in, it just seems like an excessive amount to clean ducts. Uh, well, it wasn't, as I said, it wasn't just ducts. Well, I mean, okay, one. cleaning ducts and, and trunk lines and, and did, vents. And I did get uh, I did get another quote, but when I started to do, when I started to ask cleaning the entire ceiling, um, you start having to go to uh, a couple of contractors around the state, and the price was way higher. So they were actually one of the few people that would clean the entire ceiling, <laughs> like above the tiles, <clears throat> below the tiles, and that kind of a thing. So that's why I went with them on that, because... I started to go to warehouse cleaning companies and you know companies that clean the rafters of, of large facilities, and their costs are much higher. So, okay, thank you very much. Okay. All right, Councilman Berry, Mr. McIntyre, while you were up there, I had a question for you. Do we have an ordinance officer on duty on Fridays? Yes, we do. Will you do me a favor, or, or do the residents in, in in the River Oaks subdivision a favor? Their trash pickup is on Thursday, so. They have subsequently people that leave their containers out on Friday and it's yeah, causing some so. problems over there. Okay. Could you please put that on your list to have somebody patrol that area and, sure. and at least get that wrapped up? Absolutely. Thank you very much. And Chief Brogan, I had a question on 614. <clears throat> and so is this an electronic? version of this law enforcement manual or so that's a total of 22,000 for the law enforcement manual that, that's actually for the police but that that is what that is um lexapol is because i know i know they have it for fire as well i don't want to mention it dan yeah and it's got your signature on it so 614 614 Oh, that's that's the one that we got the email with the adjustment. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why with the email with the adjustment. I, it, was, it was originally seven thousand seven hundred, and then I'm sorry, fifteen thousand nine hundred and twenty-five. Then it was an additional seven thousand seven hundred and twenty added. Mm -hmm. Go ahead by the email. So uh, let's suppose a system that we're using for um, a state accreditation system that we're going to be implementing in the police department. It. Uh, converts all our policies and procedures into uh, electronic form. It updates them, keeps them updated at the federal and state level, and it pushes them out to the officers electronically so they can have them at their fingertips. Um, and it also provides um, quizzes, uh, daily testing for the officers, so it's an ongoing 
training thing. So it's the uh, state accreditation that the uh, chief was looking into, wanted to implement, and uh, to bring us up to uh, state and some national standards. Okay, okay, great. So, so, so then, if you don't mind, so why is it signed then by um, Lee Gavin on the first one, then the second one that we got with the email is with uh, Chief Brogan? Okay, so it's accidental then? Yeah. Okay. It's accidental. Sir. But it's all for you guys, for the police department, correct? Correct, for the police department. Okay. Well, that's, that's software and a whole service. Correct. It's, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Any other discussion on uh, current claims? Hearing, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 8A from Mayor Dan Poletko, purchase of property from the Wayne County Tax Foreclosure List. Mr. Chair. Councilman <clears throat> Barry. Move City Council authorize the purchase and subsequent payment of the property located at 4693 Universal in the amount of $4,262.95 from the Wayne County Tax Foreclosure List uh, and authorize the purchase as outlined in 8A. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Any further discussion? Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair? Uh, Councilman uh, Abdallah. Abdallah. Um, Poor Ben. Go ahead. <laughs> so I, so I, I, I assume it's for the mayor. So I had, I had some notes here for clarification on this, and we've kind of touched on that. So can I get just a little bit more clarification as to why this exact property? You mentioned it's by the creek. That's the only one that's gone for foreclosure that's near the creek? On Universal, 4693 Universal. Well, when I looked at the map, it was near the creek, but I think that it was mentioned by Jack that this home is in pretty bad shape, so there's so a just second to reason down? to want to take it down. Okay, so the main purpose of this is just to tear it down, not because of the creek situation. Correct. Does so, this have anything to do with flooding or anything like that? Or? No, it's just in, it's been in disrepair for a long time. It's been vacated. The neighbors, it's been a chronic <laughs> issue in the, in the, on the block. Um, neighbors on either side have expressed an interest that they'd be interested in purchasing, you know, maybe him the, the property split and having additional property. So. And the damage on it is past repair, pretty Correct. much. Correct. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Mr. Councilman uh, earlier, my question was really answered, but for the record, I, I wanted to know because this didn't tell me what this property was going to be for, but if it's for a demo, I'm, I'm all set with. Because otherwise, Jack, <laughs> somebody could buy it, try to rent it out, and you know, it's demo to see alone. In its present condition. Yeah. Councilwoman yeah. uh, Clayton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had the same question. Of course, this is just the purchase of the one property, but I had a question, and I hope this is the time to do so. the The question was a tease, and you answered that it was Tifa that's purchasing those. Is that correct? Do I understand that correctly? No, on the purchasing, they reviewed them. They reviewed them. Okay. All right. Because I, I was just curious about what we've been talking about with the rehab of homes, and hopefully we can bring that to a study session to discuss the process that Director Hashem has been working on that I fully support. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, there's some negative to, you know, selling them all to a third party and then, uh, mm -hmm. you know, whether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not, not getting, getting them uh, all, you know, rented out or something. Right, right. Well, these particular businesses that I understand, they would, you know, encourage home ownership through the homestead, but also a proper vetting process where they would be interviewed and bid and would be brought forward to the city council for our, you know, to interview them. I think that's the right thing to oh, do. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's what Director Hashem's working on. So I just wanted to comment that I think that's a good idea because that would benefit our community and risk the or reduce the risk to the city, and help revitalize our neighborhoods. Well, yeah, and, uh, City Attorney Garmiaki, there's some discussion about you know this not being a good idea or being. Yes, if you recall, uh, this honorable body ended up passing something, giving me and Mr. Hashem and and me like authority to do the RFP, work with Mr. Hesham to put out an RFP, get the responses, award the RFP, and go through the rest of the process. We had discussed that, that matter. We realized that we did not have the time to be able to pull it all off and come back and do it appropriately. 
So we are going to be looking at this more fully at this time and we're going to try to prepare something consistent with the wishes of the council but also consistent with some of my concerns that I've expressed in a attorney client privileged um, letter to the mayor last year uh, that will be shared with the rest of you. Uh, my biggest concern is trying to send something with an attachment to Councilman Kaczynski. We sometimes have a problem so we're going to have to end up doing that and Councilman Abdallah you had requested that information so we'll be sending that out to everyone and have to figure out how we can make sure we get it to Councilman Kaczynski. Uh, Kaczynski so that he can open it usually through the clerk's office is what we do so so but the risk is that a there are a company of can, can buy them and then just flip them and we don't have well any. and there are additional problems there's making sure that they're going to do what they're supposed to do there are concerns I mean we have our uh, county commissioner here there are some concerns that the county could object to the whole process because essentially it keeps money from going into their revolving fund or the state revolving fund which where is where the excess beyond the minimum bid if we sell the property is supposed to go to. Okay. There are a number of things that are potentially problematic uh, with this type of process. So mm -hmm. I, I would probably actually rather share my opinion with you. You could review it and then maybe we could discuss it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a study session. Thank you. Thank you. Session. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 <coughs> those opposed, the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 9A from Treasurer John Riley, investment of funds report for June 30th, 2017. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. <laughs> uh, uh, Councilwoman Clayton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to uh, receive note and file the investment of funds report for June 30th, 2017, as outlined in 9A. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 9B, from, from Public Service Administrator Bill Zimmer, 2017-2018 Road Construction deny, Design Engineering Authorization. Mr. Chair. Councilman Barry. Move City Council concur with Director Zimmer and advertise, authorize the advertising for bids for the 2017-2018 street construction program um, for the Valley View subdivision and northern, northern half of the Lewis Manor subdivision, um, but not to exceed the price of $35,000 as outlined in 9B. Second. Second by uh, Councilman Abdullah. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Councilman Musket. Uh, that Lewis Manor, is that the last part of, of Manor Street? Or Manor Street, I'm thinking back of my youth. Uh, Fairwood? Okay, thank you. Um, by the way, and thank you for the other thing there uh, at uh, Ro Ro Rochelle and Amboy there. Now, I want to be clear about that. Correct. Yeah, and I so they stated, northern Correct. half. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those <clears throat> opposed, the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda also from Public Service Administrator Zimmer, 2017 Biennial Bridge Inspection Report. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kaczynski. Will council uh, approve a Public Service Administrator's request for uh, conducting the 2017 bridge survey. Uh, numbering 25 bridges in the uh, jurisdiction of the city of Dearborn Heights. Uh, this expense should not exceed $25,000, all per the item 9C, dated 9-17-17. Support. Sorry. Support by Councilman Berry. 7-17 is correct. I said 9. 7 Any four, discussion? 7-14-17. Seven, seven, right. Mr. Chair, the Chair. Councilman, Councilman where does it get paid from? Doesn't tell us where it's going to be paid from. The bridge report yeah. comes out of uh, the highway funds. Mr. Chair, Councilman Odella. So I had a, I have a question for Director Bill Zimmer, please. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, so for clarification purposes, there's 25 bridges that will be inspected. Um, and it's for $25,000, so it's just based on simple math, it's roughly about $1,000 per bridge. Can you just give me a little bit of an explanation as to the process and in, in, in the reason for the cost at $1,000 a bridge? And I'm not questioning it, I'm just clarifying it. I think that would be better directed yeah, to Dan Mr. Brooks. Brooks. Okay. I only ask because that's your signature on the bottom. Right. Um, each of the bridges, they, the, um, there's two-man crew goes out and they have to do a physical inspection in the field. All right, and then there's a report written, and each each bridge has a history um, dating back from year 2000. All right, and um, about 14 of the bridges need to be reported back to MDOT because they're on the critical bridge list, and there's forms to be filled out. So, so I'm trying to understand roughly the man hours involved to pay $1,000 per bridge. Well, you've got. You got two two men out in the field, roughly two to three hours per bridge doing the inspection, and then you have the reporting to MDOT, and then you need to do individual reports for each bridge, which is filed individually at the DPW. Okay, thank you. We we basically it's the same price we've had for the last four or five inspections. Okay, so we've held the price. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 <coughs> those opposed, the ayes have it. Next item on the agenda, item 9D from Police Chief Lee Gavin, Motorola Solution Service Agreement. Mr. Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. Both City Council concur and authorize the payment to Motorola Solutions for the service agreement uh, from June, of, June 1st of 2017 through August 31st of 2017 in the amount not to exceed $14,457.66 to be paid out of the D police department's contractual services account as outlined in 9D. Support. Support by Councilman Musket. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Councilman Abdullah. So I have a question for the captain, if you don't mind, for clarification purposes. Weren't we, I, I thought we had authorized for new equipment is this coming next year or just this is for the uh, service agreement for the dispatch councils that are in there currently okay so okay it has nothing to do with any new equipment that, that we we're getting okay got it thank you any further discussion hearing none all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye, aye. those opposed the ayes have it the next item on the agenda, item 11A from Corporation Counsel Gary Miatke, second reading of proposed ordinance H-17-04, definitions pertaining to special assessments. Mr. Chairman. Councilwoman Clayton. I move proposed ordinance H-17-04 be considered read for the second time and effective upon communication, or excuse me, publication, as outlined in 11A. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 11B from our city clerk, Walter Persevich. Resolution authorizing the city of Dearborn Heights to enter into a grant agreement with the state of Michigan for new voting equipment. Mr. Chairman. Councilwoman Clayton. I move to adopt the Election Commission Board Resolution as outlined in 11B. Support. Attached. Supported by Councilman Musket. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kaczynski. I thought I saw something about a roll call vote. How, how urgent is that and how necessary is that? Well, we'll, we, we can, we can we vote on it. I don't know if it's necessary, but we might as well if we've got the motion and. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, in, in other words, an individual roll call vote? Yeah. I'm sure it'll be an anim, uh, unanimous. Okay. And any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? I just want to say no. Zero no's. <laughs> Uh, the next item on the agenda, item 13A, business license renewal for Cooper's Garage, 21224 Van Bourne Road. Uh, Councilman Kaczynski. I move the council approve the renewal of the uh, Cooper's Garage business license uh, as indicated in item 13A. Support. Support by Councilman Barry. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 13B, permanent traffic control device number T264, uh, two stop signs at Parkland and Emory. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilman Kaczynski. Move well, that the council uh, concur with the recommendation of the police department uh, staffing with regard to the permanent control devices, uh, namely stop signs at North of Bound and South Bound Parkland. Support. Support. Support by Councilman uh, uh, Abdella. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. That ends the regular business portion of our meeting. Any announcements from anyone? Mr. Chair. Chair. Okay. Uh, okay. Councilman Musket. I just want, I'm looking out in the crowd, and I want to say welcome back to Manny Aegis. Glad to see you here. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Hmm? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilwoman Clayton. I have two questions um, for follow-up. The, the first one is something that Councilman Kaczynski had addressed and brought up, and it was regarding the, it's now closed, is the limo service, the business on Telegraph Road, North Telegraph Road. And of course, they are no longer operational for whatever reasons, which we've been brought up to speed on. But my, my concern, it was brought to my attention, and I have the photos here. I will pass those down. I've got those. And um, the concern is with the, the property, it's really looking like a chop shop and blighted. And the question is, is it's been on the radar, and why is the issue not resolved? Because I know, Councilman Kaczynski, you addressed that at least a year ago if I recall, possibly longer, because American Stit Post had contacted you, if I'm correct, sir, and the issue remains unresolved and looks like this. And that's a concern, you know, why it's taking so long to resolve an ongoing issue. And again, it's quite blighted. There's parts, vehicle parts, there's doors, there's all these things that are left on the property there that is blight. So. Thank you. Uh, Director McIntyre. So originally, actually, uh, it was uh, Councilwoman Horvath that first uh, brought it to our attention. And uh, we had uh, the owner of that business in court multiple times. Uh, uh, Attorney uh, Miyake was involved in that as well. Uh, subsequently, during that time that he was in court is when the state stepped in and it officially closed the business. Uh, we were able to get him to uh, remove all the vehicles from adjacent to the stits post we were uh, we through court we were able to get him to correct some modifications that he made in the street uh, including adding uh, a curb so that it wouldn't hurt his vehicles uh, he cleaned up a, su a substantial amount of things i'll admit that once the state kind of got involved i talked with someone at the state level they asked me to kind of back off a little bit and let them do their mm -hmm due diligence uh, in terms of the charges uh, and the claims that were brought against him as far as the business mm -hmm. goes. And I know recently we've gotten re-involved again. He's selling things off there uh, to try to liquidate what he can. And uh, we've been in contact with him more recently. I, I admit that it's more recently in the last few weeks, it's, it's starting to look blighted again, so. Yeah. Okay. I, I, if I may, I would note that I recall last time we dealt with this in court, uh, it was pretty cleaned up, relatively speaking. It wasn't like the picture that I just saw. No, could, that's recent. So that, that must be more recent. Well, I mean, could I just make a clarification, though? I mean, just because I've seen the property. Those pictures there are not necessarily on Telegraph, uh, driving on Telegraph. I think because. It's the backside. Yeah, it's a back, the because there's like about three or four buildings that the gentleman owns. Mm -hmm. Right. And from my recollection, it's just on recollection. That's in between the two buildings on his own property. I don't think that's, I, I don't know how much it can be seen from the street. I haven't seen those pictures, but I'll tell you that. That's, you I'll can see this from the street behind the building. It's still visible and it's still blight. There's tires, there's parts everywhere. Right. There's, you know, you can see they're chopping things, the parts up is what they're doing. So initially our, our, our immediate goal was to deal with all of his offsite parking that he was doing that was not uh, in cooperation with the ordinance. So we dealt with that. There was probably 57 vehicles that took him 
about 90 days to move off the property, and we were working with them uh, in the court during that process. We went out there. Uh, we we actually um, had to get involved. DPW had to get involved. There was a lot of, uh, if you remember, a lot of uh, stains from oil and gasoline on Waverly, a street that had just been uh, replaced not too long before that. So we've done a substantial amount of cleanup there. I would say, that, like I have just said, it's been in the last couple of weeks that I've noticed that I, I feel like he's coming up into an end in terms of what he's selling. We're reaching out to him again to find out how we're gonna uh, get, the, get this officially cleaned up. I know at one time another company had come in and was trying to negotiate some kind of deal with him to buy what, what he had remaining and I don't think that took place. So we, we are following up on it. Thank you. And the second thing I had was also a follow-up question um, regarding the POAM contract and negotiations. And approximately 30 days, it's been about a month or so, we were told that there's an actuarial report coming and wanted to see if there's an update on that. No, but I would wish you would bring negotiations up like all of the other council members do in a private discussion. This should not be discussed in the public. All right, I'm just asking about the actuary report because that was public. simply call us up and we'd be happy to respond to it for you. Any other announcements? <coughs> Any other announcements? Uh, uh, Clerk Walter Prochevitz. Director. Two weeks from tonight, we have a election, folks. Therefore, we will not have a council meeting that night. The council meeting will be Wednesday. Correct, right. Mr. Chairman, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, if you have applied for an absentee ballot and haven't got it, please call us. Um, we are maintaining sending them out on a daily basis. So um, you can apply for an absentee ballot all the way up until Saturday, August 6th at 2 p.m. We will be open that day, Saturday, from 9 to 2 for absentee ballots and any other issues you have. Um, with the election. Um, for my poll workers, um, those of you, several of you have, have spent some time here uh, attending the new equipment training. Uh, just so you know, I promised to put some videos up regarding the equipment training. Those videos are now online. They are at my website, the election website on the City of Dearborn Heights um, website. So. Um, those of you, we, we've had some calls, it is up as of today, so you can review that. Those of you, our poll workers, that didn't make the training so far, feel free to go look at it. Um, we have both new handicap equipment and we have new tabulators, so it will be a little bit different. Um, one kind of I would think an exciting thing, part of um, the process of uh, obtaining new equipment in the state of Michigan, um, they have changed the system. We will now be modeming the results from the polls, from where you vote on election night. Before our poll workers leave, they will connect a modem. They will modem the results to Wayne County. Therefore, the results will be much more accessible earlier. They will, Wayne County will have the results before I get them. As those of you who know and have seen the process, our workers have to close the polls, take care of all their work there, come in, deliver their equipment. We have to get their cards, read them in, um, look at all their reports, make sure everything is correct before we can even start getting the results. So I advise you, um, those of you who are interested in the uh, election results, go to the Wayne County Clerk website, go to the Elections Division. There will be a link. There's going to be a drop-down box, and it will give you every community. So if you're interested in other communities other than Dearborn Heights, you'll be able to view those. Um, there will also be, I looked at a prototype of the website today. It's, it's not up and running yet, but it, it looks really, um, Easy to navigate. There will also be a map of Wayne County where you could click on a community should you uh, want to go that way. So I urge you all to, to take advantage of that. Um, uh, speaking with the uh, Wayne County IT people today, um, 
without any problems modeming as long as all the sites can get the modem working and transmitted they will probably have the results posted at nine o'clock so um that's that's something new and exciting and, and uh, hopefully that'll uh, make a lot of people happy um one thing for the candidates i'll be sending out a um, email as I've been updating you from time to time but one thing to be aware of um, there is a rule about campaigning at the polls um, so please make your poll workers aware you cannot be within 100 feet of a poll entrance please make your poll workers aware our staff was out today at all poll locations marking with paint 100 feet I'm um, Jay Lee shaking her head she knows um, Please respect that. Um, we've had some difficulties in the past, so let's let's um, work with our poll workers and, and and let them know what's going on. Even if it's raining, uh, you can't take shelter close to the building. If the 100 foot mark is in the street, sorry, that's the state law. It's MCL law 168-678. Um, so you have to stay. 100 feet away so thank you for in advance for respecting that law uh, finally um you can call us at any time we'll be open uh, that saturday election day we still have intermittent problems with our phone we do answer our phones in the clerk's office i promise you um, if you can't get to us we're having difficulties with our phones email us i check my email very often during this time of the year so if you're having any difficulties, email us um, to reach us. Um, with that being said, I don't think I have anything more to say, but the good luck to all the candidates. And uh, um, we'll see you Wednesday night after the election here at the council meeting at 8 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Uh, uh, Director Zimmer? Yes, my name is. <clears throat> the uh, Ann Arbor Trail Road project is pretty much complete, just a little more restoration work, uh, but the roads are all back open as of tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any, any other announcements? Director McIntyre. Uh, hello, Council Chair and Mayor. <laughs> just wanted to talk about a couple of upcoming events at the library. Uh, first off, Tuesday, August 1st at Carolyn Kennedy Library at 7 p.m., we will be having a program on the history of Jackson Prison. Join <laughs> Judy Krasnow as she talks about how and why Jackson won the battle to become Michigan's first state prison, how the prison became the largest walled prison in the world, I never knew about that, <clears throat> and how it had turned a small village of 300 people into a large, thriving industrial city. Uh, next, uh, Tuesday, August 8th at 6.30 p.m. at John F. Kennedy Jr. Library will, will be a program on diet, weight loss, wow. Join us as Dr. Carrie Saunders gives an enlightening talk on nutrition. This talk will touch on food to friends and foes, common but little known sources of cholesterol and many other topics focused on healthy eating. So that's all for now. Thank you for your time and see you at the library. Save me a seat at that one, pal. I need that. Mike, one. thank you. <laughs> 400 Cooper Street. Our uh, police department and our personnel police department. Police department and human resources department. Uh, yes. Come on, move her up that we can see her. Come on up and get up to the microphone so they can hear you. Um, we'd like to make an announcement that uh, after. We had quite a few problems or questions posed to the police department about hiring. Um, how do you get people interested in the police department? Um, it was posed at uh, budget hearings, closed sessions from city council, members of the public, and the administration. How can we make the police department a, a more interesting place to come to work? Um, after talking with the administration, city council members, members of the public, um, we decided to try to stimulate interest from kids, young adults leaving high school, going into college. Um, and one way to do that is to, <clears throat> with permission from the mayor, to explore this uh, proposal was 
to create the police service aid um, employment opportunity in Dearborn Heights. So it's, a, it's called the police service aid. It's for kids, young adults leaving high school, going into college, might be interested in police work, but you know, to get to be employed as a police officer, you have to have college, you have to have a college education, you have to uh, go to the police academy. There's a lot of money you have to put out at the beginning to gamble on whether you're ready to be a police officer. So this program is a, is a part-time employment program um, that will expose young adults to the police department, the whole police department, um, various bureaus um, that will receive instruction in each bureau or each unit. Um, we had staffing issues with crossing guards and sometimes in the jail. Um, they received training to you know, fill into those positions. Um, and I believe, I believe, the chief believes, uh, I don't want to speak for the mayor, but the mayor and some city council members believe that this would be a good start <clears throat> to kind of gather individuals from the community into the police department to stimulate some activity, interest in being a police officer. And so um, a lot of this creative stuff happened on the police department side, but to implement it, you got to go to HR. So we're happy to say that we're now accepting applications and we're going to take applications until August 31st, which is a Thursday. Um, applications are available online. They're available also in my office. You can download the application or if you want to come to the office, you could fill out the application in person. You can fax it back to us. You can download and email us. And if you have any questions, you would be more than welcome to call the Human Resource Department. I'll handle the questions. If I can't handle that question, I will certainly get the answer for anybody that is interested and the telephone number to the human resource department is 313-791-3420-791-3420 will, will, will this will you be able to get this out and on social media and on yep. the papers because yes. uh, mr. mayor I really appreciate um, your efforts here I think this is a great program to help nurture some of these uh, some people from our community and let them gain interest in, in police work because for too long, you know, we've been stigmatized with not wanting to nurture um, the young. So I think this is a great way to do it. Yeah, thank you very much. I want to thank you for your help and assistance in this too. And uh, and not to let other councilmen have come forth, Councilman Abdel and others. I think this is going to be a great program. It will help us diversify. Uh, the police department it's a it's just a very positive uh, program for our city and I know it's going to be successful well I also think that I'm sorry the, the best part about this is most of the general recruitment is going to be from within the high schools within our city which is great you know it, you know getting people that live in the city currently to be able to serve which is excellent so good job right so even though the schools aren't in season we're going to work you know as schools open because this is going to be an ongoing program right. and so you know we'll be reaching out to the I, I assume you guys will be going out to the schools and doing some sort of a presentation mm -hmm. yeah, we'll yeah. going out to the schools uh, local colleges yeah. cool mr chair and uh, all right go ahead uh, uh, you know and, and i and i know for a fact it's it, uh, getting to hire policemen is getting very very difficult uh in the day and age that we live so it so i i appreciate the uh, all the problems that you're dealing with uh, but I know in the past I think uh, Councilwoman Hicks Clayton mentioned something about looking at our military veterans how is that going along okay so that's with the pays program um, through the US Army specifically Army so um, the contract is under review by um, Gary Miyake um, the pays program has had some um, reorganization within their own personnel so we have a new point of contact we are actually scheduled to talk this week um, to get you know to share the information and, le and pick up from where we had left off a few months ago so they did present to our civil service act 78 um, commission so there's still the requirements that we require of any 
law office, you know, anyone that's applying to be a uh, law enforcement officer. And so what we think will happen is these people exiting the Army, um, they will then, they would most likely be qualified if they were a military police officer today or in the Army, they would be able to get into an abbreviated police academy, something that would give them the law enforcement certification through the state of Michigan. So, um, you know, it's in the works. Gary and I actually spoke this week about the contract, and so we just need to get in touch with the new PACE people. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, Council if I McLean. can just add, I, I want to thank you for investigating and working through that with the PACE program because it does provide a hiring um, pipeline, so to speak, not only for veterans, but your active reservist. And we have the MP station right here at Inkster. And so these are folks who this is their chosen career field that would help place them. And like you said, M. Coles has the accelerated program. So they're already, you know, they're getting, you know, where they need to be with their degree and education and as well as the experience. So I want to thank you for pursuing that as well. And I think, you know, that idea as well as the idea you just shared is great for our police department, for law enforcement. So thank you. And we've been lucky because over the last couple of years we have had some military mm -hmm. um, people that had, who have retired from the military or whatever in both pol police and fire. So this Act 78 Civil Service Commission, they've been very proactive in even giving mm -hmm. military veterans additional civil service points. And you know, the fire department was a recipient of a large grant for recruiting people who had had active duty service. And so it's been a it has been a very good um, good program for the city and we have hired quite a few veterans and mr. chair thank you uh, councilman Barry so I guess uh, I, I want to go back to this original program uh, to qualify you need to be 18 years of age correct in a high school or GED graduate high school or GED <laughs> and the um, I, I believe the support mechanism is there to help them um, so pay for the Academy once they uh, are determined that they're ready to move forward see that's the uh, difference between the two programs um, mm -hmm. the pays program I'll speak louder yep. pays program well no I was with, talking about deals, the with, program. deals with people that are already employed and have some employment no no, no and, yeah but I'm only interested but, in the program we're our, adopting but now the but the police service aid mm -hmm. it, that's gathering people from the immediate community and, and, and nurturing them towards the police department and one of the biggest problems we have in hiring police officers is that it's the background investigation that they have trouble passing. Mm -hmm. So if we're able to nurture them and when they're getting out of high school before they make some big bad decisions, mm -hmm. that's the part where we're able to kind of direct them, say, hey, you're not going to get a job if you're out there making some big bad yeah. decisions. So um, there's been talk with uh, other members of the community about trying to work out some um, ways to supplement their police academy um, or police academy training. Um, that's an area we're still trying to work on and we're receiving a lot of positive feedback from the members of the community. I and think they're, it's, uh... they're, they're working very hard to try to find a way because that's a big hurdle for yeah but i think it's really creative on your part i really do i i, I think it's great thank you very much so. also captain can you just enlighten us a little bit more because i i i, I just want to clarify i mean the people that will join this type of a program will be doing some pretty serious work i mean they're not going to be just watching only no the, so if you don't mind participating you, in yeah if you let's say you know some jail activities so jail operations that includes you know Booking of prisoners, monitoring prisoners, feeding them some light uh, uh, clerical work and some light housekeeping. Um, that's kind of, you know, we may need some assistance there. But then they're also working with um, officers in other u bureaus. They're, you know, might be assisting them with, you know, putting together, you know, a file or a case for court. I think there was some ride alongs too. And, and, th and that's one of the carrots that we try to leave for these people is you know everybody watches television they you know you watch cops or you know 24 live pd and you know it's the cops are riding around on the streets and they got the cameras with them um that's kind of exciting and that's how you kind of 
continue to stimulate their activity, their, right. their interest in police work. One of the good points, though, a lot of, and I think, Captain, you went through a cadet program. Yes, I did. So they learn from that experiences, and they feel they know how to do that stimulation, right. giving that thing because they were cadets, and that a lot of those cadets became police officers right. in Dearborn Heights. It was just an excellent program. We hope this one will serve in the same way. I, I think it will. Thank you very much. Good job. Nice. And if you have any other questions, we'll see you at the police department. Thank Good you. Good work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> see you at the library. Hmm. <laughs> any other hmm. announcements? Uh, Director Jack McIntyre? Yeah, if I can just say real quick, uh, I didn't I didn't plan to say this, but two of my part-time ordinance officers have gone on to the Detroit Police Academy. They now have a commitment there, but I know their interest is coming back and being police officers in Dearborn Heights. So uh, I can appreciate the program that they're doing as well. If I can just uh, let you know that uh, currently we did this last year. Uh, we're doing it again this year. We're uh, inviting National Honor Society students into City Hall. They kind of start in the ordinance department and then we kind of uh, assign them. We first find out what their interests are. So we have some that are helping in the water department, uh, some that are in the building department, assessing office, ordinance, and even in the mayor's office, and HR as well. So, uh, and that brings up a point. When you are calling or visiting the ordinance department, uh, sometimes uh, people's conversations can be a little colorful. So it would be prudent for me to remind people that we have uh, seniors in City Hall, so we, we'd want to make sure that we're respectful of that. I really came to announce that this Sunday, I've announced at a couple other meetings and on uh, Facebook and on our city website, this Sunday we're hosting the Michigan Humane Society. It's our third annual low-cost pet vaccination clinic. Uh, it's We had posted it as starting at 10 a.m. till 2 p.m., although I've gotten more information that the MHS has posted that the start time is actually 9. They've committed to st uh, stay till 2 o'clock. So this is for healthy dogs or cats over um, uh, six to eight weeks of age. It includes vaccinations, rabies. The vaccinations are $5, rabies are $5, and you can get your pet microchip for $10. So you, you can't find those prices anywhere else. It's a great okay. service. They're bringing 1,000 vaccinations. Uh, last year they, ser they had uh, 15 locations. They narrowed it down to only four this year. Um, Clark Park, Stopel Park, and one other park in Detroit. This is the only uh, location that doing that they're doing outside of Detroit. They liked coming to Dearborn Heights. They wanted to come and do it again, and it was a, a great negotiating tool when we were talking about our contract with them. So it's this Sunday. Uh, I would suggest you try to get here. Don't please don't be intimidated by the line. If you see three or four hundred people in line, the line does go very fast. And like I said, they're anticipating at their other locations they've had as many as a thousand uh, pets come in to get vaccinated. Uh, you can also come that day. This is for Dearborn Heights uh, pets only. You can uh, obtain your animal license that same day. We're gonna have folks from the clerk's office and the treasurer's office as, uh, here as well. It's much easier to bring cash, uh, especially as it pertains to the vaccinations. That part of it is handled outside in the front lawn of City Hall, and they're requesting that you bring cash only. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director McIntyre. Any other announcements? Any other announcements from anyone? All right, hearing none, uh, any residents, uh, come up and state your name, the street you live on, try to keep your comments to three minutes. Seeing none. Huh? Deb Brown, England, on Silver Lane. Um, on June 22nd, the Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, League of Women's Voters hosted a candidate forum here in the City Council Chambers. Yet, as of today, the mayor's portion of that forum has yet to be aired on the city site, WDHT YouTube page, or on the cable station. Originally, there was a dispute in regards to one of the questions. Um, the League of Women's Voters said they were not going to release the video for airing. Um, I actually disputed that accusation with um, a lady called Sarah Courtney, and she's at the National League of Women's Voters in um, Washington, D.C. And she actually found no problem with the video and no so-called so personal attack during the mayoral portion of the forum, and subsequently released the video for showing on July 11th. This forum should already be airing for our residents to view on YouTube 
and on our local cable station, but as of today, it still has not. And we are almost two weeks past that date. Um, WDHT is the resident's local government news access channel. I was told that there's currently no space available um, to air the forum, which is ridiculous because seven new programs since the day that they've received this video have actually aired and been put on. Um, and in, in the lineup since the administration was given the okay to, for this forum. Um, the residents want this forum to be aired on WDHT, the cable channel, and on their YouTube site prior to the primary election, because that's why we have a forum. Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilman Kaczynski. I, I think this conversation and this presentation is skirting the issue of uh, campaign, which is uh, election campaign activity that should not be a part of this uh, venue. This is this is nothing that city council would vote on, act on. Well, so it, it, it is regards to city business, and it was paid for by taxpayer money. Uh, for the, the cable access channels paid for by then maybe you can urge the airing of this it is not electioneering because I'm not endorsing any candidate or any specific we don't have anything to do with that we well but don't. I think that the residents need to hear this information and I would appreciate my three minutes I do get to speak my three minutes whether you can do anything about it or not actually um, so the um, would you try to wrap up I will, yes. The delay in airing this forum appears to be just one more political tactic by this administration to keep the residents from hearing the truth and just adds to the lack of transparency from this administration and the residents have complained about for years. The forum was recorded in council chambers. I, I wish to respond now that I, I I'm not done. that I have a right to respond. I, didn't inter I don't interrupt anybody else if I can speak. No, my students are not up. Yeah, they're long up. Well, because you interrupted me. Okay, we time and you have given in previous one in previous um, forums you have you have given council uh, you've given people way more. Right. In fact, last week you gave or last council uh, meeting you gave somebody you ten the minutes. The issue here is you're you're stating your opinion. Uh, yeah. Well, no, no, I actually have a question about an election yes. issue is problematic. It is. It is not an election issue. It, it is. is something to do it with is. taxpayer money, which you guys actually and th that, dole out that, that in in yeah. the budget. So, so it's actually budgetary. Okay. So you, you're, you're you're finished, oh, Mr. Chair. Sure, you want to do that? Yep, Mr. Chair. Can I ask? A lawyer will be in contact with you then. Hey, Councilman Musket, who has the authority to put this on? I mean, to air anything? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, my mom watches. The, the 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 channel all the time and and she gets angry like oh god like a somebody attacking a beehive when Comcast doesn't broadcast it uh, so sometimes they just shut it off and uh, but who has control over you know who gets on and do, do they pay to get I on believe or how does WDHT, that work? I would imagine yeah Mr. Chairman it's a local government channel let me let me respond because uh, the facts were not presented but. And some of this, unfortunately, is going to be a little political. And I would just assume you have not gotten up. Actually, we're in agreement with showing with it. But let me, let me indicate, given the fact that there's been an accusation implying that the mayor stopped it, I'd like to clarify something. The League of Women Voters approached the city about filming the candidates for him, and the city agreed. During the forum, it was pointed out by the League and agreed by the League that due to a female candidate for mayor not following the rules, attacking other candidates, and accusing me of causing the Great Recession in 2008, the League of Women Voters mayoral candidate forum would not be shown. At that time, other programming was fitted into the time slot that was allocated to this forum. I even lobbied the League of Women Voters for another taping of the show to follow the League's rules. After being bullied, the League decided to release the tape, but because it was almost two weeks later, the city no longer had a spot for it. I have no problem showing the true colors of candidates that have decided to run, and I'm fine with showing the candidates for them, and we'll make sure that we get it in before the primary. I believe we should be transparent, and I want the citizens, because to see that forum so that they can understand that I'm both a homeowner and a taxpayer and not all the candidates are. Mr. So Chairman. So you'll let him lectioneer? No, no, right, Mr. On. Chairman. 
this is everybody hold on. So opened it up. We're, we're, we're done with this issue. You've had more than three minutes, so I'd appreciate if you'd sit down. And if anybody else from the anyone else, anyone else from the audience, come up and state your name and the street you live on. Uh, my name is Mustafa Almona, and I live on Nightingale Street. Uh, what was your name again, sir? Mustafa Almona. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as part of being like part of the youth in our community, I feel like the us and how I understand like other youth around me that we need more like rec rec like recreate recreation centers for like us to be more active. Like this park, like right here, the Silver Lane Park. I feel like this like the soccer field that they have on it is like it's not leveled out. I feel like we need to like do more to help out the community, and the basketball court behind you. I mean, like I think that the the rim should like be uh have better. They should make more. They should have better ones to play on, so we'd attract the youth to come here and play. Okay. I I, right. I I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. I I visited Swapka Park a few weeks ago and saw the ball fields there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the uh, coaches there are losing players to other cities because uh, our ball diamonds really aren't up to snuff of uh, what kids want to play on today. There's no pitcher's mounds and, and things of that nature. So I, I, I hear you, and um, I truly believe that we'll work with our parks and rec people to try to, try to fix that problem. But it, mm -hmm. it also takes a lot of funds that that we're working on and there's other grants that we can try to get and it's being looked into as we speak trust okay. me on that thank you and no uh, one, one last thing is that like we have places like the star field star academy's field but those are like private mm -hmm. and then hype athletics is like a private organization so we want something like that's like public well, the, yeah the star academy is a it's a charter school but they get public funds and i know those facilities i think are locked for the summer that's really up to them to have them open or not. But yeah. um, I've coached and played at Swapka Park all my life, and those are nicely maintained fields. Um, and they, you know, they're they're used almost every day in the summer. And, and you got Parkland Park that that has the uh, the soccer fields open all the time, I believe. Am I correct yeah. in saying that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there are <laughs> facilities. Uh, can they be better? I believe they can be better, but again, it, it, it takes time for us to go through them um, to get that done, and, and I'm, we're hearing you, believe me. Okay, there Thank is you. some stuff that's in the works right now as far as recreation is concerned that's going to be coming into the city, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else, yeah. please get up and state the name and the street you live on. <clears throat> oh, God. My name is Arthur Taylor. And I live on Culver Street in Dearborn Heights, District 7. And I want to tell you, I appreciate everything you've done for me and everything that uh, the city's done for me. And uh, I made a mistake when I said something about the last time I talked because I didn't have no teeth, but I got them now. <laughs> you know? And uh, I said right, and you, everybody thought I said white. But I moved into this neighborhood to be in the right neighborhood. And that's what I want to bring to your attention. All right? And if you took it the wrong way, I'm sorry. But I appreciate everything you've done for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, please get up and state your name and the street you live on. A lot of people want to get out of here quick, so I'll try and be quick. Bob Haddis, 500 North Beach Daily. Just a couple things. I, I know I've complained about uh, one of the candidates that's running for a new uh, council, and he's, his signs obviously say uh, uh, re-elect so-and-so, and I won't get into that, but whose job is it to at least notify him? I'm not saying here bring charges against anyone. Whose job is it? Do we, do we at least give that person notification that the signs are contrary to state law? Because here's, uh, here's, okay. what, I, here's what I'm afraid that's going to But here's what I'm afraid is going to happen, Gary. This is what I'm afraid is going to happen. If this, if this person gets in, then the next runner, could he technically go to court and say here, did he fraudulently misled the public mm -hmm. by posting these signs and bring an action and have us redo an election? 
Well, Mr. Abdulha contacted me about this, then I contacted the city clerk to find out what the protocol typically is that's followed by the state or suggested by the state. And as I understand, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, city clerk for Shevitz, but complaints are supposed to be lodged with the Wayne County Clerk's Office election. There's a, a spot that you're supposed to go on their website and end up putting in the information and then they in the state end up following up on that. We don't have any ordinances that specifically deal with signs in terms of the types of regulations that you're talking about. In other words, if something is a violation of state law, we don't have a comparable local ordinance that allows us to end up pursuing that matter, and it really should be addressed to the state through the protocol that they have with regard to that. I don't disagree with you. In fact, I did call the county and I did call the state and I spoke with officials with the county. I spoke with officials at the state and I even spoke with a uh, city clerk and they explained the filling out some financing statement, but I won't get into that. My question really is, is has he at least been advised that those, I'm not saying to file a, tell him that we're going to file a complaint against you. Has he been at least made aware of the fact that your signs are in violation of state law and he made reference to MCL 168 and that it does fall under MCL 168. In fact, I'm the person that uh, looked up the particular law and unless the law has changed, he's still in violation. At least advise him so that the person who, if he happens to be, is there eight people that get in on the final? So maybe the ninth person, then my thought, does the city get burdened then with, if this guy goes, some but the ninth person point. goes to court? Good That's says, an election hey, issue, and that, that is do, the county clerk in the state, and the state actually has a form that you fill out to make a complaint. They, I have, have but not seen them do if anything. I go to enjoin an election, I file an injunction stating that this person fraudulently misled the public because he shouldn't have had those signs, at least if he's made aware of the fact that he's in violation. I didn't say bring charges against him, but at least make him aware if he's not aware. It's heard by the chief circuit judge and the judge. We're well aware of that. And, and but and is anyone from the city charged with at least advising him? Okay. No. no. I mean, and, and that would be an issue that ultimately, if there was an issue, would end up going through the state and going through the county. I mean, if there was an issue of that nature. Hopefully it's a moot point. Hopefully. Well, yeah, but that's a good point that you bring up and something well, we one should. Of, one of the things from might, because I, I'm aware of a couple times this coming in, but it was a one-on-one -on -one candidate. The other candidate went into Wayne Circuit Court and the judge upheld that they were not an incumbent. So there, I know there's, I don't know if those cases are published yes, or not, yeah. but, but it, the judge, it was a no-brainer, I mean, yeah. immediate. But when you're running in a pool of people, none of them have the I money know. to sue. Uh, I, I, I understand, but the law is very specific. I and agree. It's, I agree. Okay, now look, that's enough of that. Uh, the other issue, I, and honestly, this is people coming to me, and they're, they've mentioned this arena and so forth. Is this, do we have, we lease this arena out, or what's going on with this arena that, that I'm told is le is at least out at fifteen thousand dollars. Subleased a, um, a year. The operator didn't work out, so they're in discussions regarding other operators coming in. Now, these other proposals are we looking at other proposals, and will this come before the council? And, uh, it hasn't and come before these the council yet. And, I mean, are if we have proposals and we entertain proposals, does this go out for uh, some type of uh, public air? A public uh, bid or something and does that come before the council then in, in fairness to the council they have asked uh, the recreation director myself and the city attorney uh, and the city attorney is putting together a package We're, we would like to meet uh, mid or late August and we'll present to you exactly where we are uh, the intent would be to obviously go out for a proposal and open yeah we oh. had we had did, you All right, because I looked at the size of the building. Like I said, I've been dealing with real estate for quite a while, and you have someone on your council 
that's been dealing with real estate for quite a while. Actually, since I'm 21 and I'm 67 now, I've been playing around with real estate and so forth. But that building at $15,000 a year, I could sublet uh, <laughs> and make a ton of money if I'd made the improvements and so forth. So hopefully, and I guess my other question with respect to that, maybe there was an original intent that that thing was supposed to be used in a different uh, manner when, it w when this lease was first given? Is it to serve community uh, in many ways? Maybe that's why the lease uh, amount might have been less? I'm not sure. Well, we wanted to keep it used as a set of the, the ice arena, the operator said, look, there's just not the demand for ice for, and that's happening in several communities. We, so we, we did not have people, we, we didn't have a single person interested in the proposal. Now, now we have some uh, very competent individuals who want to take that particular building and I'm very happy and pleased with the kind of people that are showing an interest and the kind of interest they're showing. But to be fair, it needs to be opened up in an RFP and people uh, bid and then, and then we'll listen. And I agree with you, Mayor, and I, that sounds uh, very promising and I hope hopefully that's the path that we're going down and so forth for the best interest of this uh, city. I guess uh, the other thing you can't. Last thing that I'd like to know is that we're. You, our, I, I apologize for interrupting huh? you, but if, as just as a rule of order, because we we cut this young lady off from speaking, I don't think it's fair for you to go on over th for three minutes when we cut her off at that point as well. I think we're gonna we're, we're creating well, an issue here, and I respect. I didn't. I didn't know you were the chair, though, Mr. I'm not. Barry. You're right. And you're absolutely <laughs> and right. I didn't know you were the chair, Mr. Barry, I and I wasn't the not, only one talking the during keeper. that discourse. I wasn't the only person talking to, during and that I discourse. Stopped at each time but I just Mr. have Harris, one last honestly. one last question, and maybe someone that's in charge of our accounting of the city. I'm just curious where we end up uh, on the fiscal year in terms of uh, surplus or Mr. Mr. or Chairman, not. You, are you, you really need to enforce this. Yeah, so we'll, I'll talk to you after the meeting about that. I'll, I'll let you know. All right, hopefully someone that follows me can ask that question. Thank you. Anyone else? What are you going to do? Good evening, everyone. Uh, Zuhair Abdelhaq, 354 Rosemary. Uh, I don't want to criticize anybody, anybody tonight, but I want to re remind some people who are running for offices too, that at one point they were renting too, they weren't owners of homes. Uh, I'm here tonight uh, for one reason. Uh, sorry. We have had the override passed and we collected, I believe, around $15 million in the last five years. And I believe the millage is around 8.5% right now. And I noticed that the first year we collected $3,145,000 approximately due to the Hadley override. This year we collected $3,249,000 which is around 100 and 5,000 more than what, what we originally collected. You're At the correct. same, maybe I'm wrong. No, you're wrong because the Headley override was requested when the property values dropped, and so we lost 20% of our income. The Headley override allowed us to recapture some of that, but we never recaptured it all. I agree with what you say, Mayor. I'm not. I'm just yeah. saying the numbers from the treasurer's office. This is what I looked, and that's what I saw. If I am wrong, the treasurer is here. He can tell me I am wrong if he's here. Uh, you promised, and everybody promised when we put the Hadley override on the ballot that it will be rolled back. Yeah, it gets rolled back. It's rolled back from 8.5 to 8.46, which is 0.04%. I believe we, the residents, since we have $5.5 million, which is not captured yet, actually, in the bank, it's coming sometime in the next year budget, I believe we are the resident who stood by the city when the time was hard. I believe we deliver maybe some break 
especially the people who really are on low income. I appreciate it if the administration and the city council will work something to give a break to the residents who gave their money willingly when that was needed. And I thank you. Anyone else, please get up and state the name, the street you live on. A motion to adjourn. Support. Well, Good evening. Go, go ahead. Well, These gentlemen earlier want to talk, so I don't know if you know. Which mm -hmm. gentleman? That's it. Remember, they were going to talk, talk. and told them at the end. Yeah, you told me to. Go ahead. I can make friends. It's hot in here. Uh, Robinson, Shady Awad. Um, so we ran this program three years in a row, 12 different uh, times, five different cities, and all of our contracts were renewed. We take the worst houses in these cities, fix them, we do the demos, we do all the houses, things like that. So it is a great program. I just, I never was able to speak to anybody, and I did want to speak on our behalf of what we do. And we did over 250 homes here in Wayne County, and we're proud of what we do, and we just wanted to be council to be aware of what we do we've been doing real estate for 35 years we did all the super walmarts here in michigan and our family has been um, doing this and i'm taking all this experience here to wayne county now we're contracted with wayne county to do these programs with the cities that are not doing these programs but it is very beneficial to the city and we're thankful that the mayor did meet with us and talk with us in regards to this program and hopefully in the future we'll get to uh, fix these programs. If you look at the tax foreclosures, I mean, it's the worst of the worst on the list. You know, from what we did in Taylor, what we did in Romulus, Wyandotte, Melvindale, Allen Park, um, now we're helping Inkster. Um, it's just a great program, and we're just hoping that you'll be open to it next year when we do come up and do this program. Um, but our track record speaks for itself. Five mayors, five letters recommendation. Um, you know, 250 homes, and outside of this, we also own another 500 properties. Yeah. So, I mean, we do have a lot of experience. We have a lot of funding. We're ready to work with the cities, and we're great partners with the cities outside of these programs. We do a lot of different things with the cities in the community. We're not just here to do this. We're putting forty to $50,000 per house, and all of my competitors, I mean, it's sad to say, but there is no competitors. You know, we have four or five other groups doing this, and nobody did it on our scale. Nobody did it on our level. And I have five mayors backing me that didn't bring anybody else in after they started working with us. So just wanted to let you know, and hopefully next year this is something you guys consider. Mr. Shaddy, Thank you. Thank you. I, I personally visited some of them homes. You did a great job on them, every single one of them. Just want to, I think you remember when I was at, at some of your homes. Very good job, very nice construction. Yeah, thank you very much. And we'll be working with the county on this program as well. So thanks a lot. Thank may, you. I a, may I ask a question about that? When you say working with the county, what do you mean by that? The county's exercising their right because cities are not. Namely, they're getting the property and then they're. Yeah, getting... instead of going to the auction, every time the property goes to auction, it's gone. I go to these auctions for the last 10 years. I'm bidding against people from China, from, you know, California, Texas, buying all of our properties and putting unqualified people in these homes. They're bragging to me that they're fixing these houses for five to ten grand and putting people in there for eight hundred. So it's crippling the community. I've lived in Allen Park for 34 years. Um, we have homes all over Wayne County, all over the U.S. And what I'm seeing happening to Wayne County is just a shame with all of these people at these auctions that I go to every week. Um, buying your properties and bragging about five to ten grand per property and I, I mean it, it's just tough you know it's just tough to see what's happening with our cities All right thank you thank you yeah anyone else motion to adjourn good evening everyone